Good morning and welcome to Encompass Live. I'm Emily Nimsikant filling in for Krista Burns here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event. It covers a variety of Library Commission activities and other library related topics. The free one hour sessions are offered every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time and they include things like presentations, interviews, web tours, mini training sessions, and question and answer sessions. And they are always available as recordings afterwards. If you can't join us for the live session, you can listen to the recordings online. Today we have Deborah, Julie, and Susan presenting a session called What to Read. Good morning, everyone. And let us know if you can't hear us. Since there will be three of us talking, we've tried to arrange the mic, but if we need to adjust it at all, let us know. Our topic today does relate to what to read next. And you might have had a patron walk into the library and say, that is if I can get it to move forward, there we go. Do you know of a good book? What should I read next? Do you have another book just like this one? Okay. And even if you don't hear it from your patrons, if you're not in that kind of a library, if you're a librarian, you've probably heard it from a family member. But do these questions just scare you to death because you're not quite sure how to answer them? Well, today we're going to be talking about resources that you can use for readers' advisory. Some professional sources, some social networking sources, and also talking about what you already know and what you can share in you doing readers' advisory. But first, I'm going to start by talking a bit about what a reader's advisory is. Okay? Reader's advisory can be one-on-one, -on -one, doing book talking in the stacks, or you could actually market books to readers and try to target one group of readers that like a particular kind of book. But what reader's advisory also really depends on is knowing what you have in your own library's collection what you can get a hold of, and knowing books. Okay? There is quite a bit of literature out there now about Reader's Advisory, but Joyce Serix was one of the very first to start writing books about Reader's Advisory and really talking it up. She, her first book, Reader's Advisory Service in the Public Library, is now in its third edition. She's also written the Reader's Advisory Guide to Genre Fiction, she writes a regular book list column about Reader's Advisory, and she does presentations all over the country. And a few years ago, she did actually come to Nebraska and do one here, too. The first book is ba the Reader's Advisory Service in, public in the public library. is a good introductory resource for how to do Reader's Advisory. Um, it talks about reading and thinking about books, how to talk to patrons, how to interview them to find out what kind of books they're really interested in, how to do talk, book talking and things of like that. Now a lot of the things that are covered are pretty much common sense, but sometimes they're things that we need to be reminded of. But So now we're going to look just briefly at what suggesting books to patrons entails. Okay, You should really make suggestions to patrons allow them to decide whether what book you're suggesting is something that they're really interested in. Don't want to push books on anybody, okay? But to find out what to suggest, you do basically need to do an interview. You need to find out what do they like to read? What did you like best about the book that you're, you want to um, find another one like? What don't you like about books, about particular kinds of books, okay? Most people, when they're talking about reader's advisory, have a list of characteristic or items of appeal that they tell you to listen for when you're talking to these patrons. Um, sometimes some people list four characteristics, some people list a dozen. I've just picked out a few of them um, right here. Okay? Not everybody who likes the same book likes it for the same reason. So you need to ask the questions, figure out what it is that they're looking for. Okay? Just as an example, um, a book that both I and Julie actually have read recently is 
the Guernsey Literary and Pot Potato Peel Pie Society. I'm try saying that ten times fast. <laughs> I have a hard time saying it once. Um, somebody who has read this book and enjoyed it might come back with responses like, well, it was a historical fiction book, or it was a gentle read. You know, it, it didn't have um, uh, foul language or sex scenes, but there was a bit of mystery, a bit of romance, a bit of humor. It was just a nice, sweet read. For the plot, they might say, oh, well, it was about an author looking for a storyline for a new book who gets a letter from a man who found her name in a book that she had once owned. In the correspondence between the two of them, she discovers that he was a part of a group of people who started a literary group to escape punishment for breaking curfew in Nazi-occupied Guernsey. And she learns how they survived the war and how they continue to help each other in the aftermath of the war. For setting, they might say, oh, well, oops, I did two of them. That's OK. Um, it's post-war England. And actually, Guernsey is an island off of um, the coast of England in the English Channel. Format, it was mostly letters. There were some journal entries with some telegrams thrown in, but it was mostly correspondence between a number of different people. But that correspondence did tell a complete story. Okay? Characters, uh, most of them were pretty eccentric, but there was a plucky, um, quirky heroine, and but because the letters were from various people, you got a real feel for um, a char one character that was described from a number of different viewpoints. The pace, it was a quick read. It wasn't really a fast-paced thriller or anything of that nature, but I read almost the whole thing in one sitting because I wanted to find out what happened. The tone, it was pretty upbeat overall. Yes, bad things happened, but the characters were survivors, and you knew that things were going to pretty much come out right in the end. And for some people, happy endings is everything. Don't give them a book that has an unhappy ending, okay? And part of that relates to why are they reading? Are they reading to learn something, or are they reading to escape, okay? Whoops, let me back up half a second here. Okay. Um, if you were actually going to make suggestions um, to someone who wanted a book like this, um, and you picked out certain things that they were really focused on, for example, if they were really interested in the letters, the English connection, the author, you might try suggesting 84 Charing Cross Road, which is a collection of letters between um, an author that was actually located in New York to a, a bookstore in London. If they were interested in letters, don't care really where it happened, slower paced book, you might suggest Fair and Tender Ladies by Lee Smith. If they were really interested in the World War II aspect, things that happened during the war and how people survived them and how they went on after the war, you might suggest A Town Like Alice by Neville Shute. So depending on what they emphasize in describing the book to you, you might suggest different kinds of books, okay? Okay, what if you have a lot of demand for reader's advisory? One of my um, professors always said, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> so if people are coming, if you have a lot of people coming in asking for recommendations on, say, romance books, put together a list and have it on hand so that any of the library staff can use it, okay? On the right-hand side, I put up an example. Um, it's a page from Joyce Herrick's book of different kinds of little lists that you can create for your patrons and your library. Um, in this particular one, it's popular topics in fiction, um, and they not only created a, a topic, but they actually defined it so that everybody is considering the same thing when they're adding to these lists. And in this case, they're just listing to, um, authors who write in that style, okay? 
You can also create annotated book lists with just a little bit of a blurb about a book so that people can look at that and say, oh yes, that's of interest to me, or no, that's not quite what I was looking for. Some libraries still create bookmarks on particular topics or authors. You can also create book displays where you're marketing to, um, to a large group of people. And these can be for, um, you know, if you have a popular book, a book that's in, or an author that's really in high demand, you might create a display that says, if you like, you know, this author or this book, try one of these. Or if you have a long waiting list for a really popular book, you might call it, um, while you're waiting for X, try one of these. Okay? So you can market to people and do reader's advisory work ahead of time. Okay? Um, how do you create these lists? How do you come up with ideas for suggestions? Well, personal knowledge is a big one. Um, thinking about books that you've read, but also tapping into other staff members, what they've read, and don't forget the patrons. If you suggest a book to them and they really liked it, when, when they come back, say, you know, what did you like about that? Um, would you suggest it to someone else? What else do you like that's written in this style? Okay. Beyond personal knowledge, um, <clears throat> there are also print sources. So if you're not familiar with a particular genre or you don't have time to read a lot of books, um, we have a number of different titles here at the Commission. In addition to Joyce Sarek's books, we have an ALA Reader's Advisory series, which includes the Horror Reader's Advisory and the Mystery Reader's Advisory. If you have teenagers who are in, that are asking for books, we have Serving Teens Through Reader's Advisory. There are also other print sources out there, like Genre, genre Reflecting, that one's hard to say too, and What Do I Read Next? Book reviews in journals such as Publishers Weekly, Library Journal, and Book List usually have summaries of books, and they'll usually mention the appealing characteristics of books. That's another way to find books to suggest. But in addition to print resources, <clears throat> there are a lot of non-print resources, and they, they, um, the number grows yearly, daily, <laughs> exponentially. Um, but there are certain databases that are out there that are more professional that you usually have to pay for. However, in, with these two uh, examples, the Books in Print and the Fiction Connection, which is related to that, and WorldCat, the Library Commission pays sub the subscription for all Nebraska residents, so anyone can get in and use those. Some libraries also subscribe to a service called Novelist, which is a pro another professionally done database. There are all kinds of other websites that are put out there by book groups, by individuals, and there are a lot of listservs and blogs that also talk about um, books and reading. So now I'm going to turn this over to Susan, who's going to start off with, which one, Susan? <laughs> with one of the databases, and she's going to um, highlight some of the features that will help you in doing reader's advisory. Okay, um, how do I escape? And then NLC reference down at the bottom. Well, I'm going to go ahead and go to Nebraska Access um, and take a look at one of the databases that I think is pretty helpful as far as um, reader's advisory goes. And that is Fiction Connection. Um, the one limitation to Fiction Connection, of course, is that it is uh, limited to fiction. Um, there's pr probably a little bit of um, that gets bent a little bit because they do have uh, sort of personal narrative. They do have some sort of memoirs included, and so those would also be, I, I would think, I think of those as nonfiction, but they read like fiction, so they do include them in fiction connection. And um, 
fiction connection does go back probably to um, it's not just adult titles, but it goes back to maybe um, midway through elementary school, some picture books, chapter books that kids like. So it's not just limited to adults. Um, there are a couple ways to use Fiction Connection, and so I'm going to go ahead and start out just by doing a search for a book. Um, this is really helpful because you can have the patron tell you the book that they like um, and the book that they want to find um, similar to. So um, if they come in and they tell you um, they liked, let's just, I haven't, I, I didn't practice this one, but let's just go ahead and try since um, Deborah mentioned the, what's the title? Just hit go and see. G U U E R S E Y Literary. That's where you go. Go ahead. And what is it? Is it, it's um, Dan Quayle that said there's an E on the end of that? <laughs> Okay, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society. So here's um, the book. And so if a patron, if you've never read this book and the patron wants similar books, um, you're kind of in a jam. Um, so if you go ahead and take a look at the record for this title and you scroll through, you do get the summary reviews. And then they assign um, different characteristics to each title in the database. And you can scroll through and you can see what the details are, sort of what genres have they assigned to it, what topic areas, time frames, location, setting, character traits, etc. So uh, many of those uh, characteristics that Deborah mentioned. What's nice is you can go up uh, to the top and there's a button that says Find Similar. And when you click on that, Basically, what the database does, or what the search engine does, is it goes out and it retrieves all the other titles in the database that share at least one of those characteristics with this particular title. And they will uh, sort the results by relevance, and by that it means um, books that share the most characteristics with uh, the target title are going to appear at the top of your list. The easiest way to see what characteristics are shown is to look right here, and if you click on Show All, it'll show you um, what all characteristics it has in common with um, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society um, book. So self-discovery, self -discovery, friendship, journeys, adventure, adult, Europe, etc. So one thing you can do is you can just scroll through this list and see if you find titles that might be of interest to your patron. Um, you'll notice up here it does say there are 65,000 results. And the other thing you can do is you can look over here on the left, and um, one of the things that Deborah mentioned is that the characteristics that made a book appealing to one person might not make it appealing to another. Um, and this lets you actually um, sort of focus and craft your search, so you're focusing on the characteristics that your patron liked. So um, you can go through and you can look at the topic areas and see what did you really like. Um, there's um, location, setting, time frame, character, traits. Um, up here you have the topic area and genre. And you'll notice that there's a number behind each characteristic, and that shows you how many of these 65,000 titles um, also have that particular characteristic. So you can get a sense of, you know, if you're going to really reduce your reading list or if you're still going to have a large selection after selecting a particular characteristic. So we could go in and we could say, okay, only show me um, books that are about writers. And so that's going to uh, reduce our list to, it was at about 2,000. So now we've got books about writers. And um, then we can go back and look at those characteristics again and say, okay, now I also only want those books about writers that um, are set in World War II and click on that. And now we're down to 31 titles, um, which is a manageable list to go through and look at. Um, the nice thing about this database is um, if you don't like um, how you uh, reduced your uh, result list, you can always uncheck a particular um, characteristic and you'll um, increase your list size again. 
So um, Fiction Connection is really going to be helpful if your patron is asking about a book that you maybe haven't read, um, you don't have a good sense yourself. This actually walks you through the process of asking them what characteristics did you like about the book. Um, one other way to use um, Fiction Connection, um, if your patron isn't coming to you with a specific title they want to find or they want to read, um, you'll notice this, um, this display here. And you've got topics, genre, setting, character, location, time frame. Um, and this display is a little bit deceiving. It sort of rotates through the different um, categories or the different tabs here. Um, so what's easiest if you want to actually use this is go down here and click on View All Topics. And it's going to start out off with the Topic tab. It's going to list more topics than you could ever think of. But um, if you have your patron browse this list, they might be able to pick out a topic area they'd be interested in. Um, you do see that the words are different sizes, and the idea is that um, the larger the font, the more titles are going to um, have been assigned that particular category. So, you know, you could scroll through, and maybe somebody likes to read about academic life. So they could click on that. And now you're going to get a whole list of books. Um, that uh, have that as the main topic area. Again, um, something like this is just a good prompt um, for patrons. Sometimes they can't tell you what they're interested in off the top of their head, but if they see it, um, they, they can point out what they're interested in. So, you know, it, it just helps jog people's memory. Okay, we're frozen up here. Oh, um, when you do, um, click to view all topic areas, um, you will, after you click, you will have to um, cycle through the tabs uh, manually if you want to, for instance, um, take a look at genres instead of topics or characters or settings. So you can just click on the tab and you can tell when the um, display has changed because there, the um, fonts are going to be color coordinated with the tab color. So here are a whole bunch of genres listed that you might be interested in. So, um, this is again a very useful database for um, readers' advisory. Um, I want to show you one other uh, resource um, that I recently discovered that is useful for readers' advisory, and this actually helps me do readers' advisory for my um, eight-year-old. Um, trying to find books that are an appropriate reading level for him and might be something that he would like. Um, this is a site called Find a Book with Lexile. And we do have um, this URL in our delicious account um, under today's Encompass uh, session, so you should be able to um, find the site there. Um, what I really like about this site is, first, that it does let you um, search by um, Lexile as a measure of reading level. So if your school actually does use Lexiles, then um, a child will have been tested and, and they will have sort of a, a Lexile um, range that they should be comfortable reading in. So you can enter a Lexile number. Or over here, um, you can select a grade. So we often have people ask us, can I search this database um, by reading level or by grade? And most of our databases, um, for instance, WorldCat, is not really a good, um, easy way to do that. Um, so this lets you search by grade level. So I can say third grade, 
And then it asks you, um, does this person that you're searching for find books that they read for school difficult? Do they find them challenging but not difficult? Or are they too easy? And so you can sort of target um, where they are as far as third grade reading level goes. So um, I'll just choose the middle option and continue. And once we get to the next screen, there are actually two ways to search. You can again um, do a keyword search. You're also going to be given a um, display of, sort of topic areas that you can drill down through in order to pinpoint um, what the reading interest is. Um, what I really, really like about this site is that once you've identified titles, it does link you to worldcat.org. And so you can find out then easily whether a book is available in the library. So um, it provides you with a way to search that you can't search in WorldCat, and yet then it links you to WorldCat. So it really enhances that, um, both services, I think. Okay, so um, a couple years ago, um, my son was really interested in the Titanic. Um, and so if I was still looking for books in the Titanic form, I could type in a Titanic and click on search. And it gives me 11 books. Um, they are in a particular Lexile range that was identified as sort of the average third grade reading level. Um, and you'll see over to the right, you can add to a reading list. You can find it in a library through worldcat.org or you can purchase it through Barnes & Noble. Um, the other thing that's nice over here right, there's some limit abilities to limit. Um, you can limit by you know, fiction or nonfiction. Um, or then down here I like this. Um, you can limit by page count. So you can say, um, okay, I want my child to be uh, reading, I don't want them reading books that are only, you know, 20, 25 pages long. So let's make them read page books that are at least 48 pages or longer. And so you can uh, limit your searches that way too. Um, I want to jump back um, and show you the drill down option here. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to go third grade and um, sort of the, the middle reading level here. And um, my son also likes to read books that are funny. So there's an option, humor and games. You can click on that. <coughs> plus sign, and then you have some subgenres or subcategories. So he just likes funny stories. So I can select that and do the search, and then it'll just look for books that have that characteristic that are um, probably at an appropriate reading level. Um, once I find something that I think uh, might interest him, I can just click on the WorldCat uh, link, and it jumps me out to worldcat.org. And I should be able to find out whether it's in a local library. So as far as um, trying to identify books for a younger reader where, where reading level is going to be um, a component of the process, um, this find a book I think is really useful. So here are Nebraska libraries that are not too far away that have this book. Um, just a couple other uh, ways that I have, I've been sort of doing reading, reader's advisory for myself. Um, anymore, there are lots of social networking um, possibilities as far as reader's advisory goes. Um, there is a site called Visual Bookshelf that I've been exploring. Um, let me go ahead and go there. And I actually found this site through Facebook. It's an application that um, sort of interacts with Facebook. And so um, you can use it uh, through, um, through that social networking service, or you can go to it directly and create an account. Um, let me go ahead and sign in, and then I can show you what it does for you.
since I've entered some parenting books in here. Um, some health books. Um, you can kind of get a good idea of why it's making the recommendations it makes. Um, if I go to my profile, you should be able to see where I, see where I have friended our reading. And I think that that's just a valuable way uh, to figure out um, or get ideas for reading. Um, we all are around other people all day. Um, lots of those people are probably reading books, um, but they don't necessarily uh, talk to you about it. Um, not because they're trying to keep it a secret, but just because you're busy and talking about other things. Um, but if people are willing to sort of keep an online list of what they're reading and share that with you, it's a great way to get ideas. And then. Um, Often it's a good conversation starter, too. So um, getting your patrons introduced to some of these services, if they are real voracious readers and really like um, sh talking about books with other people, um, that might be a nice sort of program um, to have sometime. Um, you can get some of your, um, some of your real um, voracious readers hooked up with some of these services that may help them as well. Um, and finally, I just want to point out Facebook itself. Um, I was talking to one of my coworkers the other day, and we've both experimented with some of these sites like Visual Bookshelf. And they're a nice way, a nice place to go to just see longer lists of what um, your friends are reading. But just posting, um, just a brief post on a social networking site that you participate in about what you're reading actually seems to sometimes get the most comment. Um, it's not really intrusive, I don't think, um, but people are interested in knowing what you thought of a book or interested in saying that they've read it too. Um, I've had people ask if they can borrow a book after I've said I'm reading it. I've had a librarian say, oh, I'm going to order this book after seeing that I was reading it. So it's just one more place to, um, one more place to um, share reading interest. Here's a book that um, I'm just reading now, and I happened to uh, post that I was reading it, and I've had several people comment. Um, it's about parenting, and this is someone that I'm friends with um, based on going to library school with them, but we haven't really ever um, commented back and forth, but she happens to have an eight-year-old boy, too, and she immediately commented, does this book tell you how to wean your child off of Nintendo DS? I need all the help I can get. So. You know, this isn't somebody I correspond with regularly, but she saw that book and she immediately piped in. So um, it just kind of, uh, it does seem to draw people out of the woodwork as far as commenting on what you're reading. I had another friend go through and all of the different posts about books I've read or reading, and she went through and said, oh, I'm reading this one, or I bought this one, I have to read it. So it is a good conversation starter. Um, I also want to show you something that O'Neill Public Library is um, they have a page for their library, and uh, what Becky, the director, is doing is, um, it looks like, I don't know for sure, but I think they're new books that she's getting, but she's just posting, um, posting uh, on her wall new books that the library is getting, and you'll see that people are starting to comment and respond and say, oh, this looks good, or I read this one, or... Um, I think one time she said, if I can respond to this message, then I'll post more books that um, are new this month. And five people responded and said, and said, post them. So, you know, people are enjoying this as a way to just see what's new in the library without being overwhelmed by a huge list. So. And it's just another way to market what your yeah, library has. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, that's about all I have, so I'm going to turn it over to Julie. Okay. Well, that's a good segue because I've oh, you didn't log me out of Facebook. <laughs> um, well, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to show something that is very like that, and that would be. Wait, wait, wait. Um, pulling out the or there's the question coming in. Just put that, those arrows at the very top. Arrow. Arrow. The very top. There. I just want to make sure we're not missing any questions or anything. No, looks like we're okay. Okay. Keeping arrow back. Oh, okay. Um, 
I'm sorry. I can't. Too many I'm models. unfamiliar. I'm not used to this before. Okay. Um, Goodreads is another very similar to what Susan just showed. And just to show that there are multiple uh, recommendations and or websites now that this is actually a social network of within itself, but it also interfaces with mm -hmm. Facebook. And I was invited by my nine-year-old neighbor <laughs> who wanted more friends, <laughs> I think. <laughs> how can I say yes? And so that's, and I actually haven't played with it that much, but that's how I got started with it. And um, so I should probably sign in. Like I said, I don't have... Wouldn't you be happy if that was the social network that your nine-year-old wanted to participate in? And uh, actually my nine-year-old also is... is yeah. Uh, using it. So, and they're the only friends I have on here at this point. And you'll see they're very goofy little updates and that sort of thing. Um, but it is, so it, it has an interface with Facebook mm -hmm. the same way. Um, and it has all kinds of other things that are really fun about it. Here are my friends. I'll show you my friends. My daughter and Catherine. <laughs> um, but you can use it to find books. You can record, the, the My Books is you can read uh, what you want to read, uh, what you have read, and that sort of thing. But finding books, I really think this is kind of fun. They have all sorts of popular lists. You can do a search, um, you know, find something that you have read that you really liked. Got one too many things. Oh, there you go. Okay. And you can, obviously I haven't added this to my list of things that I've read, but it does. Um, so you can, you can rate it, you can discuss it. Um, and none of my friends have read it, surprisingly, <laughs> my two friends that are nine-year-olds. But it does give other reviews. If you're looking, if, you know, you can gush, 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 gush. Um, and different ratings, some people really didn't like it, <laughs> other people did. So, um, and you can do, people who viewed this book also viewed others. So it's a way of leading you. And groups, you can find reading books, group groups this way. Um, all of these people have, have read it. Um, so it's really fun. I mean, there's all different ways. You what can was that? There was something that said traveling vicariously. Was there that was on a, a previous page? Yeah, on the previous page. Up higher. I wonder what that was. Okay. Oops, now I'm going to go too far. Okay, um, whoops, sorry. Sorry, I'm probably it's asking okay. you no, about something okay. you haven't. Okay, so just scroll up. Yeah. There. That's Best traveling travel. vicariously. Down a little bit. Uh, here, you do it. No, no. Right. Oh, right there. It's a list. Yeah, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is that? It's a list. with this book. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, so it's, since oh, it's in, right. you know, Guernsey, it's in England, right. here are other books that, that are, are in other places that you might like. So you can pay. Um, and you can vote. And they do create lists that are very, um, that's one of the things that, um, there's lists and, <laughs> sorry, this is what I wanted to show you. You can see the popular lists. Best books, best, and you can click on more book lists. And there are lots of the best and the worst. And this is so much fun because it, it, these are the same. And, uh -huh. and of course, Twilight shows up on every list. <laughs> um, and then there's lists with reads and activity. But you can just go on and on. And there's also popular tags. So if you um, want to find romance, if you want to find nonfiction, um, mystery, historical, um, all of these things. So there are so many ways to find books using this. And I, I really, I'm really having a lot of fun just exploring with it. But it, and I like the visual aspect mm -hmm. of it too. I think it is pretty uh, attractive with the book covers. Um, and you can, like I said earlier, you can find book groups. You can join book groups and discuss books online. Um, and it is, there are so many. Recent popular groups, groups in Lincoln. Oh, these are mommy. So <laughs> um, recognize anybody? Make sure they got my 
more members. And there's their bookshelf, there's the eat, pray. So um, this is something, like I said, I'm just starting to explore, but it is similar to yours, and I don't know how, how you think it compares. But um, I think what is sort of frustrating is all of your friends will never be using the same mm -hmm. service. So mm -hmm. right. Um, and like I said, I have not, I haven't, you know, tried to hook up with Facebook with this yet. Or so. Okay. And I want to go back to the question. Um, yeah. So just type V E L. Oops. My typing is bad today. There you go. And you can just click on it. Okay. Um, another, let's see, all about romance. My sister is always asking me to serve as her reader's advisor for romance, which is really ironic since I don't read romance at all, but because I'm a librarian, she's always asking me to, to advise her. Um, so I actually sent her this. Deborah is okay. the one who, who pointed this out to me. I had looked at it before, but not made the connection. So thank you, Deborah. And so I'm waiting for her review yet okay. <laughs> about this. But um, I've looked at this, and I think it's really wonderful. Uh, one of the things that is great is you can actually do, a, there's a sensuality rating system. <laughs> and I work right across from the Talking Book and Braille service desk. And so I hear them whenever they set someone up for service. One of the questions they ask is, do you want any sex or strong language? And um, I think they should have a rating more like this, actually, <laughs> because yeah. they, it's a yes or a no at that point, and, and, and no, no grades within that. So everywhere from burning to kisses. <laughs> and it also gives you the, if, you, if you're unsure, this actually has, tells you various authors. So if you've read someone and you, you can figure out what level you're comfortable with. Um, so there is a review hub. There's Power Search, which allows you to limit then using um, your sensuality rating over here. So if you like just warm, you can do just warm and search for books that have that. And then they give grades. The, review, the reviewers give grades. As, so the very, looks like an A is Eleanor. Uh, so and you get a nice review. I think this is quite wonderful. Um, but there are, there, there are things from the authors here. Um, and readers speak out, raves, rants. Oh, I want to read right now. <laughs> Rant about sexuality. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of <laughs> Yes. <laughs> quite a few. Um, but there are just so many wonderful, I think, aspects about this. And, and probably the power search. I mean, if you're really looking for something, if you have a particular author, and, and of course this was um, one of the things that my sister is, uh, she loves the, um, oh, oops. oops. I had it. E, okay. E, yep. And then you there. click Sorry. Box. There you go. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll go with the title. And it's, it's, I'm sorry, I'm doing such a bad job. Hard to type at the same time mm -hmm. you're trying to. This talk is her favorite. This is her favorite author. And um, so it is really fun to to go in and do a lot of exploration on this. In fact, I found some. I think I might actually try <laughs> using this. <laughs> and um, I'm going to show you another one. But I think it's very good for readers and writers. And it's fantastic fiction. Um, one of my favorite authors is Louise Erdrich. Except I misspelled it again. And so it tells you if she has anything new. And in 2010, she has Shadow Tag coming out. It gives you her series. And actually, I think that there's another series that they're missing. Um, these three were a series. Yeah, that I, I, didn't. I 
found that their bibliographies aren't always yeah. perfect, but at least it gives yeah, you a starting point. Yeah, it does give point. a nice bibliography. Um, for collections, non-fiction, awards that she's won, and her recommendations, which I think is kind of fascinating. Um, and this is one that I've now marked that I would really like to read. So, and uh, you can, it offers uh, new authors, lists, new books. Here's the last one though, and forthcoming. Most popular. So I think there's a lot of ways that if you if you have a, a customer that you're not sure, um, you can sit them down and they can easily use these. And actually, if you go into a title, it'll mm -hmm. do similar quotes too. Oh, okay. Um, if you do like his titles. Actually, yeah. it, it gives a summary, and then if you scroll down to the bottom, it says similar book. I guess they only give one, <laughs> but um, it says the last symbol is similar to this particular Patterson title. So, which is interesting because since this just came out, and the one I chose is a forthcoming book, <laughs> so uh <-huh. laughs> they're already <laughs> yeah, somebody's already categorized uh -huh. them. So, and you can one way that I do, I try to. Um, just make myself more aware is to look at awards. Um, and even though I may not read all of them, but if I look to see what has won an award, at least I'm aware. And sometimes I can, I'll read a little bit about it if it's an author that I'm unfamiliar with. Um, so that if someone does, you know, ask me for a, a suggestion, then at least I have an awareness. So I do uh, I think this is good for that reason too. Um, I, one thing that I do want to show you that I use a lot. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, guys. I can't believe it. Oh, I can't. Yeah, there you go. Just. Um, is to look at people's blogs. Um, this is Pat Leach's blog, and she is actually blogging about and the ALA award winners uh, list for the uh, was it ALA notable books, and she's reading all of them. She does a presentation at NLA each year about the NLA notables, and so she's going through and making her notes basically of all the books that she's reading. And I've actually checked out a couple of the books that she had mentioned. Also talked about the new book one books here. And I listen to NPR and their book recommendations. That's how I found the Guernsey uh, Literary and Potato Peanut Pie Society book. Um, I heard the niece was interviewed, the one that finished the book after the author died. And um, so that, just for awareness, this is one of the places that I come, because I can't hear everything that's on NPR. <laughs> I miss a lot of their news. I have a glance, but just so so that I can also make connections. All right, I think that was what I was going to cover. Okay. Yeah. And are we um, running out of time? Well, do you want to check and see if anybody has questions? Sure. Now that I know how to do it. <laughs> are they? They're not coming through their um, cesarean. Could you click on the plus next to attendee list up kind of near the top? See if everybody's raising their hand. Yeah. Right there. Um, yeah, right there. Okay. No, okay. no more questions. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, we have a couple more minutes. Um, let's see. What was I going to say? Do you want to go back to delicious? Mm -hmm. let's see if I can ever get this right. <laughs> <clears throat> there are a few other blogs that um, can help with Reader's Advisory. Um, if we scroll down to, how about Reader's Advisor Online? There you go. Um, oh, okay. And 
I'm going to take a minute here. This is just another resource where they, um, they talk about different books that are coming out, and they talk about reader's advisory in general. So it's just someplace that um, you might want to keep an eye on to find out what people are saying about books and different to get ideas on how you can talk to patrons about books. Um, another reader who's a uh, reader reviewer who's very popular for her lists and has a blog now is Nancy Pearl. And if you remember, she actually came for a um, an NLA conference here a couple, a couple, three years ago now, too. Maybe three years ago. It was in Omaha. She was in Omaha. So anyway, um, she does a good job of, you know, giving a, a summary and talking about why she enjoyed particular books. Um, so that's just another blog. And what else do I have? Oh, for teens, there is a blog that has been put up where teens can talk about books. And you'll notice what I like to look at, too, is how often um, entries are made. And there's been an, an entry in this blog as recently as the, what was this, Saturday? Sunday? Saturday. So it's been fairly recent. Um, but here, teens actually make comments, or write blog posts and make comments about what each of, what everybody's reading. So that's just another option for readers' advisory. And a lot of these places, as Julie and um, Susan have indicated, patrons can use on their own. So if you find a good site that does readers' advisory for a particular topic, and you know that that patron is interested in that, refer them there so that they can participate too. You don't want to totally um, discourage them from asking you for book suggestions, but that you can always just recommend other places that they can search for I, ideas. I, think that, I mean, I would think that that could be a really popular program um, for patrons who really like to read, if, you know, compile some of these sites and then have a one hour you know, session, you know, come, mm -hmm. Come to the library um, and, and see a, um, a demonstration of sites on the internet that would help you figure out what to read next. I right. bet that could be a big draw. Right. And if you go to our Nebraska Access page and go to the Books, Humanities, and Reading link and then scroll down a little bit, you'll see that there are several different pages that have information about books. Um, but I'm going to go into books and reading just to show you that you can also go here to get to several of the websites that we point that we talked about today. For example, All About Romance is here and Fantastic Fiction is here. Um, and there are others that we didn't get around to talking about, like our own books and series, which is something that is compiled by our reference librarians um, from their knowledge along with suggestions from other people. And you'll see, let's see, there's an author here that I can, a series author I can take. Gabaldon. <laughs> yeah, if I can spell it. Gabaldon. Okay. You'll see that there's a series title with each of the books in order underneath them. And there's also a number at the end. And you'll notice this service was basically started for our Talking Book and Braille um, patrons and our, that department, <clears throat> excuse me, so that they could better help patrons um, to locate series. And then <coughs> they have the um, number for that particular item available right there. So, the, so there are a number of different sites out there that will help you with Reader's Advisory. Search for more on your own. Take a look at what we've talked about. And don't be afraid to talk about books. It takes practice to be a really good book talker. But people like to share what they're reading. And because you're a librarian, they like to ask you for suggestions. Well, we thank you for participating in the program today. It looks like we're, we're right at the top of the hour. So we will say goodbye and hope to see you at our next Encompass Live. Thank you.